أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لإيلا في قرش إيلا في مريلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البلد الذي أتامنا أم بن جوء وآمنا أم بن هرط أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد This is the black board Eke eku kushunumu. Sadakallahu azim. Sadakallahu azim. Sadakallahu azim. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the heathen, not seated in the seat that is can full, but the light is in the law of the Lord, and in this Lord I see I did it sunrise and sundown. Him I go there like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth far fruit in the season. Him live never I go with her, and whatsoever him do shall prosper. Yay! The heathen them now they saw them there like a chaff with the wind driven away. Therefore the heathen them never go turn upon the judgment of the sin among them in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord God the Jah loveth the way of the righteous and the way of the sin among them. Always and always I go perish. Let the people of the Most High God say, Jah! This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonamo, where we speak truth to power in my name. Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking. Ingredients of so many different types, shapes, and sizes. Oh. Relocate from their corners, relegate into the background. All their differences. Differences of color, shapes, sizes, aromas, and even flavors. Being subjected to some amount of heating in a black pot. And then they produce food. Ironically, they do not even partake in the eating of the food. It is us, the eaters, who do. Yet every time, they will rise to the occasion, putting aside all their differences, be subjected to some amount of sacrifice, yes, eating, so that food is made. What does this teach us as a people? Very simple. How many of us do not believe in generational thinking? Yes, we have it all, but we are not going to use it all. We will use and keep some for future generations to come. How many of us get into hotels and because we believe that we paid for the services of the hotel, we must leave the hotel dirty? How many of us believe that as long as we are paying for it, we must make sure that we create debt so that some people can come and clean that? How many of us believe that we must by all means keep the place dirty? as long as somebody is paid to clean up the place. I have met people in Ghana, on the streets of Accra. They throw around so much rubbish, littering the place. And when you ask them, they tell you that, oh, but somebody has been paid to clean this. If I don't do this, how would the person be paid to work? How would the person eat? What do you think about this? My brother, my sister, must we intentionally create work that is unnecessary? Is that the only work people can do in order to eat? Can't we be more innovational? Yes, more innovative so that people
can rise to the occasion and make this country better? How many of us believe that all poor people are lazy? And how many people even believe that? Yes, we have it all. Let's blow it all. After all, the Bible says tomorrow shall take care of itself. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Koko Shonemo. And here, we are generational thinkers. Here, we are the Joshua generation. What does it mean to say the Joshua generation? It is a generation of people who are not returning into Egypt, the land of persecution, but are moving towards a land that they have never seen, yet they believe that that is the land. We are the generation of people who don't have to see before we believe. In the Moses generation, the people have to see miracles in order to believe. In this generation, we don't need to see miracles to believe. It doesn't mean we do not believe in miracles, but we know the source of the miracles. Therefore, we clinch on to the source and not necessarily to the miracles. We believe in the creator, not the created. That is the Joshua generation, the generation of young minds ready to make things happen. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonemo. And here, we speak truth to power. We are live on YouTube, and our YouTube channel is Black Empire Media. Black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. -K. Yes, we are also live on Facebook, and our Facebook channel is Black Empire Media as well. My brother, my sister, you are welcome to the world of loyalty and pan-Africanism. Here, we don't do politics. What we do is known as patriotism. And of course, patriotism is what Africa needs to be able to move Africa to the next level. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonemo. And here we don't criticize. But if we must criticize, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the Black Pot. And I'm most excited to be with you. Thanks so much to EZIT, I-S-I-T, in spirit, in truth. And when we talk about EZIT, we're talking about uh, the newer social media app that everybody is talking about and clamoring around. What can you do with EZIT? You can go live. You can also make video and audio calls and also send text messages around for free. It is the newer social media app that is so positive. Now, if your regular social media app is nothing but negative, and we're talking about nudity, racism, we are even also talking about violence. Forget about it. Jump onto Is It. I-S-I-T is the most positive social media app you can find. And it's so easy to be part of Is It. All you need to do is to download this from Google Play and App Store. And it's all for free. And you are part of the Is It family. Thanks so much to Is It. We appreciate you and we love you. Your advert can also be on this show like this. And we are watched by several millions around the world. My brother, my sister. This is the Blackboard. And today we have a number of issues we want to share with you. This is the Blackboard. Come here. Now the very first issue we are looking at today is rolling on your screen. And it says, A Jacko disappointed in Akufuadu. Who is A Jacko? Alex. Kofi, and that is him. I love him, right? This is Ejako, brother Kofi, my brother, my sister. He's one of the actors Ghanaians love. Ghanaians love this man so much. His full name, Alex Kofi Edu. He's an illiterate, stark illiterate. But he has defied the odds. That being an illiterate in the Ghanaian setting does not necessarily mean that you are incapable. At a point, he was the main pillar on which the Ghanaian local movie industry was hanging on. He was the one who made the movie industry known as Kumawood. Tick and tick. And many people still remember him. Oh yes, stark illiterate, but very capable. Ejako was seen moving from stage to stage, one platform to one platform. Yes, one platform to the other platform to another platform. 
preaching the virtues of the NPP. Nana Akufu Addo's NPP. Many criticized him. Many were those who said no. As an actor, somebody who is in the public domain, do not interfere in politics. But he rubbished all this and still continued to do politics for Nana Akufu Addo. It was announced that there was a TV station that was going to be named after him, Ejako TV. As to whether that has happened or not, from the day it was announced, it is for you and I to continue asking. So many promises were made. A lot of them were never fulfilled. And Ejako today is feeling so peeved. But what is he unhappy about? Watch the headlines. Watch it. He says, I risked my life for NPP, yet the roads in my area are deplorable. And this is Ejako crying out, published by Ghana Web. Run it, my youth. He says, popular Ghanaian actor and comedian, Kofi Edu, popularly known as Ejako, has opened up about how he sacrificed for the new patriotic party, NPP, during the 2016 and 2020 general elections. Yet, the road in his area is in a deplorable state. He indicated that during the peak COVID-19 period in 2020, he risked his life to gather other people to campaign vigorously for the NPP. However, he is being suffocated with dust due to the poor nature of the road in his area. When people are enjoying and you are not part of it, it's sad. I also stay at Hilltop. But go and look at where the prominent people are staying. There are lands that nothing has been built on, yet the roads have asphalt. How many of us understand what Ejako is talking about? He's saying that where human beings live, the roads are so deplorable. But where the big men have the land, even though they have built nothing on that, the roads are all asphalted, getting ready to have buildings on. That's what Ejako is talking about. But some of us living in some areas, go and look at the nature of our roads and how dust is killing us. Just go and look at it. For this government to come to power, I was part. The places that I went to during the 2016 elections, mm. at the height of the COVID-19 in 2020, I and my boys were risking our lives to campaign for the party, he said in an interview with Angel FM monitored by Ghana Web. Ejako also urged the NPP delegates to vote for a sin central member of parliament, uh, Kennedy Japan, in the NPP primaries uh, because he has a vision to solve the unemployment crisis in the country. Dash. So you see, I like it when people look at the people first. He's saying that he supported Nana Akufu Addo in 2016 and in 2020 to win the two elections. Yet, he didn't say they did not give him money. He said the road in his area has not been asphalted and dust is killing him. Not only him, but all the other people in the area. I like that tangent. But again, my brother, my sister, it looks like day in and day out, people are getting more and more disappointed in Nana Kufuado. Just yesterday, we were talking about another key figure in Akufu Ado's life, Reverend Owusu Bempa, showing his disappointment for the president. Ejako is here. We all know how Ejako was going around, campaigning for Nana Akufu Ado to be president. He was even fighting, my brother and my sister, to have the president given some time to be able to make things happen for the nation. Today he says he's disappointed. My brother, I want to ask a very important question. And I need you to come here. Come here. Politics is so interesting. Please take note of this. If the key members of the NPP are going for a key election tomorrow, 
the fourth day of November. And they are all saying that they need change. All of them together in unison are saying that the Nana Akufu Addo government has failed. What are we waiting for? Can't we impeach this president? Number two, if all of them agreed that the Nana Akufu Addo government has failed and that they can do better, it makes me sit back and say these politicians are dirty minded. Had it not been this election, all of them would still have been clamoring around Nana Akufu Addo, singing his praises and explaining to Ghanaians things that are inexplicable. How many people understand? Had it not been this November 4 election, it would have been so difficult for all these guys who are contesting and many more to come out and say that the Nana Akufu Addo government has failed. If the government has failed, why are we not preaching impeachment? But rather, vote for me, I can make it better. In our country, it is very difficult to criticize your own party. In our country, it is very difficult for us to criticize our own president. But Ejako is here. I would not be surprised if Ejako was promised something and he didn't get it. At least there's one thing. The Ejako TV never happened. In our country, we only tend to speak when personally we do not achieve or get anything from our hard work in bringing politicians into power. Would Ejako still have spoken if he was given something for his personal use? I can't trust these people. And it's time Ghanaian sat back to look at all these hypocritical people in the entertainment space who sell out when politicians are looking for votes. I do not respect any politician in this country, my brother, my sister, who does not put Ghana first. In the same vein, I have no respect for any Ghanaian entertainer who runs after any politician, it doesn't matter what. The people who support you, the people who follow you for entertainment and support your career, they are divided along so many different political cultures and ideas and parties. When you come out boldly and start supporting one political party, it means that you do not even know your work as an entertainer. If you want to support a politician, my brother, my sister, remember that you are in the public space as an entertainer. You can support this politician low-key if you believe in this politician. But to come out publicly and say, this is the person that I'm supporting and I want people to come and support this person, know that your career is already at stake. It's dwindling. That's what we're talking about. For Ejako, I do not know how many people are going to take you serious again when you go out acting. No wonder Kumawood has collapsed to the ground. It came to a time all these Kumawood guys were busily running after politicians. And as it stands now, Ampong and some other person like that are also in the whole melee supporting politicians. We don't seem to learn from our predecessors. What happened to the other musicians and entertainers who went out on the road publicly to support politicians in this country? Look what is happening to Samini. Now he has to explain himself from one platform to the other why he supported Nana Kufuado. If he's able to survive it, he'll be lucky. We have to be careful. As an entertainer, know that that is your day job. If you want to venture into politics, then you have to sacrifice that. Or else, many are those who are going to run away from you. And like some of the pastors, your congregation has people of so many different political colors. Then you come into the church preaching one political party. How would the other 
members of your congregation feel. They will leave. Know your career before you jump into some of these things. For Ejako, it doesn't look like you have learned your lesson. You are still following politicians. To God be the glory. We wish you well. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonemo, where we speak truth to power. Come here. Next story I'm going to look at is along these same lines. Kennedy, Japan. Kennedy, Japan bound for showdown. Kennedy, Japan threatened that if he loses this election, he will give them a showdown. This is a businessman who calls himself self-made, but his political party members recently came out saying that he should stop saying that he's self-made. It is his political party, the NPP, that made him. This is a self-acclaimed billionaire. He has established a lot of enterprises around Ghana. He has built factories, employing over 1,500 people, according to him. Kennedy Japan is running for flag bearership of the NPP. He's a serious critic of his own party, especially in the last few years. He claims his party has performed abysmally and he thinks he should be given the opportunity to lead the party and also to lead Ghana ultimately. Many people criticize him, same way he criticizes people. But in the last elections, the primaries, he claimed that he was cheated and that his uh, polling agents were also intimidated. And he vowed that he would give the president a showdown and that he would give the vice president who is also running to be flag bearer of his party, a showdown. Showdown became the biggest word in Ghana for the week that he pronounced that. Now, tomorrow is when they are going for the real showdown. And something interesting is happening. Something like a joke. Run the headlines. Watch it. And this is from my joy online. It says, NPP presidential primaries. Aspirants sign undertaking. What is this undertaking? The showdown is about to start. Run it, my youth. It says, in a move to avoid a repeat of members breaking away from the new patriotic party following the presidential primaries, the party has asked all four aspirants to sign a stringent legal commitment. Did you hear that? In order that we will prevent members of the party from walking away from the party like Alan Chiramantin and the others, sign this document. What is the document about? This means that Kennedy Japan, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Aden Nimo, and Dr. Efri Yakoto cannot resign from the party if any of them loses the elections. Hey! It's a very stupid agreement. It doesn't make sense. Nobody should ever call itself democratic when it asks its people to sign this kind of... Is it a court? It is only a court that you join and you cannot leave. Whatever the circumstances, you must be in it. This is a party that claims has lawyers. Has a lawyer who is a president. A lot of these guys are lawyers. You sit down and draw this kind of agreement. A legal commitment that says that if you lose, you cannot leave. You still have to stay. What? Can you imagine this? Are we serious? Let's read further. Now the action stems from uh, the precedent set by Alan Chermateng who resigned from the party and established a new movement after coming in third in the superdelegates elections. Addressing the press at the Alisa Hotel on Thursday, that's yesterday, November 3rd. It's a mistake, today is November 4th. The party's general secretary, Justin Kodria Frimpong, said the undertaking will be enforced. The new patriotic party today 
has had a very successful meeting involving all the major stakeholders in the party, including uh, President Akufuado and former President Kufuo. At a meeting, all four aspirants were made to sign an undertaking to the effect that they will not resign from the party should they not win the election. They have also signed an undertaking in support of the winner of the party to win the 2024 main election. Dash it away. So, it is a way of saying that we are tying you down no matter what happens in the elections, you still will have to be a member of the party. Whether you are cheated or not, we are not going to tolerate any showdown. Whether your polling agents are beaten and intimidated or not, once the pronouncement comes out that this is the winner, you have to shut up and follow the winner. Is this a democratic party? And they all signed. Can you see it? Can you see? They signed the undertaking. Look at them, all four. Look at their signatures. All of them signed. My brother, I need you to come around. Come, follow me. Hey, you join a political party in your own volition. You decide when to be with the political party or not. Nobody forced you. Now you are forced to sign that you cannot leave the political party after elections. Is the political party not planning to do something untoward? Is it all of a sudden becoming a cult? What is the problem with the NPP? Nana Akufuado has succeeded in destroying the NPP. I don't know which lawyers drew up this agreement and because of greed all the four aspirants have signed it but i know the mind of kennedy japan after signing it in his heart he said apu apu member mu show down he has already vowed that if he doesn't win these elections he will give them a mighty showdown and i believe him these elections will not be free and fair. No way. And the sad thing is that all of them are preaching that the delegates should take the bribes from whoever is giving them. But they should vote for the right person. Can these lead the country? These idiots saying this, can they lead the country? Listen to their utterances. Oh, if they bring you the money, Take the money, but make sure you vote for the right person. You are encouraging bribery and corruption. Can you be a leader of the nation? What you should be telling the people is, when they bring the money, reject it. After all, it is a bait. It is poison. The less of their dirty money you have, the better. I know you are struggling in the nation. I know you must survive. But the less of their dirty money you have, the better. But no, idiots are saying, take the money. If they bring you the money, take the money and don't vote for them. I heard Mahama also say that, I think a few months back, that when they come bribing, take the money, but don't vote for them. Nobody of sane mind and patriotic mind, nobody of a civil mind, should ever encourage anybody to go for a bribe, even if after taking the bribe they will do the right thing. It is not right. It's not right. When they bring the money, look at them in the face and call the police on them. It's bribery and corruption. We should never ever encourage anybody to accept bribe from any dirty candidate and still vote against them. No, it's wrong. How many of us agree? Some of them would say, oh, it is even your own money. It's your money that they have stolen. So when they bring it, take it. No, it's bribery. Reject it. Let them know you have rejected them. Let the cheap ones go and take that cheap money. I pray that the money turns into cancer. I pray that the money turns into erectile dysfunction. I pray that the 
bribe that they give to these delegates will turn into goita. I pray that they will get lung cancer. I pray that they will run diarrhea for 500 years non-stop if they will live up to 500 years. Bribery is killing our nation, brethren. There are people who are in the hospital suffering cancers and all that because of your wicked inactions and actions. You deserve the cancer. May their cancer come back on you. May their sicknesses all come on you. Because of our dirty inactions, stealing, robbery, Ghanaian people are dying in hospitals. Hospitals where they cannot even find beds. And at the end of the day, when elections come, you want to behave like a saint. You come and you want to solve all their problems, all because you are going for an election. Why wouldn't people like that woman, what's her name? Ajua, Ajua, is it Ajua Smart? What's her name? Ajua Safo. Because we behave like we have no common sense, that is why people like Ajua Safo have a job. Who is Ajua Safo? What's her IQ level? What does she know? Why should she lead anybody? Such a dunce. Yet, my brother, my sister, you give people like that the opportunity to look down on the Ghanaian populace. It's so annoying. Such a dunce. It's sad. Go to the hospitals and see innocent people who are afflicted with diseases that should have been going to Nana Akufuado and all these people. The people who deserve the cancer. Nana Kufuado, Baomia, and all the politicians who are making it difficult for us in this country. Ajwasafo and the rest, they deserve cancer. Cancer of the ovaries, cancer of the mouth, cancer of the eyes, cancer of their everything. These are people who have no respect for the average Ghanaian. So when God licks them with cancer and the rest, it's justified. But not innocent people who were not part of all this. It's frightening. Oh, when they bring you money, delegates, don't worry. Take the money, but still vote against them. What kind of common sense is that? And there are people who think that this makes sense. You are encouraging people to go for bribery and still vote against the people. Why don't you rather encourage them to be civil? Stand up and say, who are you bribing? You know why the American police does not take bribe? Go to America. Try to bribe the American police. Hey! When they retire, they get this hefty after work bonuses. And if they joke, they know that they are going to lose all this. The benefits are big. And two, first and foremost, they are taught civility, loyalty, patriotism, America first. That's why when they see their flag, some of them shed tears. It's not just the flag. It's what the flag represents. In our country, hey, people can even use the flag, lie down on the flag, and use it for all kinds of dirty things. The flag doesn't mean anything to them. In our country, it's all about food. If this does not bring me food, it doesn't make sense to me. Why is it that we are behaving like animals? It's animals who are running after food. No common sense. That is why you can put food here and catch any animal. But human beings with common sense must never look at the carrot being dangled in front of them and lose sight of the fact that there is a, a big ditch in front of them. We need common sense in this country. That is why dunces like Adwasafu and the rest can be leaders in this country. Because they take us for fool. This is the black pot. A.K.A. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. And to the NPP, shame on you. This is the agreement you are making your four candidates sign. And they all signed it. They are all going to go against it. Watch it. Tomorrow, by this time, you will see fire. The ultimate showdown will be on. And I will support Kennedy Japan for the showdown. He's going to lose. There's no way Kennedy Japan is going to win this. He would lose. The election will not be free and fair. 
the real showdown will be on. And that is when Kennedy Japan will open up all his guns at his own party and crash it down. To God be the glory. We have suffered too much under these people. It's time to push them out into oblivion. It's the black pot. When we return, we got more. Hey! Why This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Coco Shonaman here. We speak truth to power. Here we don't do politics. We don't do sports. All we're talking about is patriotism, civility for our people. That is what we need most. If everything is provided, good roads, good hospitals, good everything, and there is no patriotism, we would break everything down and still go out on the streets crying that we need new ones. But when there's patriotism, there is the spirit of maintenance. There's the spirit of keeping it well. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shonamo. And here we speak truth to power. Next worry. And the next worry is taking us all the way to Rwanda. It's also taking us all the way to Kenya. And it says, Africa, free visa. Rwanda joins Kenya. Yesterday we talked about how Kenya opened up and is saying that there are so many businessmen in Africa. There are so many businesses in Africa. Yet, because of the artificial borders, we are unable, in fact, to achieve our business potentials. And for that matter, Kenya has decided to open its borders to every single member of Africa. You can enter Kenya without a visa beginning December, next month. South Africa recently also said Ghana and some other countries can enter South Africa without any visa. All you need to do on arrival, tell them where you are going to be accommodated and prove that you have enough money for the days that you're going to be there. If it's two days, fine. Do you have enough money to feed yourself? Or where you are going, are they going to feed you there? Africa is beginning to open up. Today, Rwanda is the new kid on the block. Come here. Watch the story. This is Rwanda. Now, Rwanda is nicknamed the land of the rising sun. That is why they have the sun right there on their flag. That's Rwanda. It's one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Rwanda is a surprise nation. We all remember the Rwandan genocide of 1992. Do we? Or do we not? We all remember how Hutus and Tutsis were at each other's necks, slaughtering each other. We all remember President Havolomana. We all remember how the whole country was at the brink of collapse. Yet these magicians were able to come together again and build back their country. And now Africans who sat back and never even supported them in their days of crisis want to run into that country for glory. Where well, Rwanda says, no problem. We are ready to accept Africans. But for what reason? This is the president of Rwanda. He was also a chairman of the OAU, now called the AU, 
We all know him, right? Yes, that's President Kagame. He's the president of Rwanda. Run the story, my youth. Watch it. And this is from the Independent. He says, Rwanda announces free visa travel for all Africans as continent opens up to free movement of people. My God. Did you see the headline? It's a whole paragraph. Rwanda announces visa free travel for all, underline the word all, all Africans as continent opens up to free movement of people. Come here! Watch me. Rwanda announced Thursday, that's only yesterday, that it will allow all Africans to travel visa-free to the country, becoming the latest nation on the continent to announce such a measure aimed at boosting free movement of people. My God. My God. Rwanda announced Thursday that it will allow Africans to travel visa-free to the country, becoming the latest nation on the continent to announce such a measure aimed at boosting free movement of people and trade to rival Europe's Schengen zone. Jesus have mercy. I am glad that I live to see Africans coming together. Oh, Rebaba, Robasha, Palalala, Where are those who said we're wasting our time? That Africa will never unite? Where are those who were saying that all this we were doing was nothing but noise? Today, I have lived long enough to see Europe's Schengen zone replicated right here in Africa. Oh, Jesus. President Paul Kagame made the announcement in the Rwandan capital of Kigali where he pitched the potential of Africa as a unified ter tourism destination for a continent that still relies on 60% of its tourists from outside Africa, according to data from the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Hold it there. You know what that means? All the tourists that come into Africa, 60% of them, from outside Africa. It means we do not encourage inter-regional tourism. In Ghana, domestic tourism is dead because of the dumb ministry known as Ministry of Tourism and whatever. They are interested in funeral tourism and Sobolo. Sobolo and funeral tourism. A minister with a PhD, Dr. Awal, and his assistant, Marco Krekumate. Well, we can say that Marco Krekumate is a semi-illiterate, so it's okay. You understand? People think that once you know how to read and write, then that's it. No! There are some people with PhDs who have no common sense. And there are people who do not even know the difference between A and B. Yet they are extremely brilliant. Funeral tourism. Dr. Awal recently said that, oh, Ghanaians love funerals. And for that matter, they are going to make sure that they, in fact, push funeral tourism so people can come out from outside Ghana and see us mourning our dead in pomp and pageantry. And over there, they'll make sure Sobolo is served to the people. And then, my God, Sobolo. So I said, a while. It's a very good idea. Let's start with your family. Let's start with your family. Which one do you want to bury now? So we start. We will make as much sobolo as possible. We will dance as much as we, we can and allow people from Europe to come and see us mourn your son or your daughter or anybody from your family. Such dumb min ministers. Ghanaians love funerals. So we are encouraging coffin making. We are encouraging more people to die so that we make money. My brother, look at all the histories we have in every centimeter of Ghana. We cannot look at these monuments and use that for tourism. We have to start dying before we can make tourism work in this country. Is this a minister with common sense? 
Does he know his work? Nobody is bigger than the truth. It's all about Ghana. They are sitting there like dummies. For some political reason, they put them there. And I speak for Ghana. We shall not look at anybody's face and let Ghana go down. Because that day will come, I will stand before the Almighty. And I shall give account for the voice that he gave me. I gave you such a powerful voice. You thought it was because of your power. I gave you that power so that you will stand for my people. What did you do? I see Moses standing before God and God asking him, when I ask you to lead my people out of Egypt, did you do it? Oh yes, my Lord, I did it. This was what I did. This was what I did. Even though it was tough, I did this and I did this. I even asked you and you brought my brother to come and help me so that at the end of the day we're able to reach the promised land. Even though I saw it, I couldn't step foot. That's the kind of testimony I would like to be able to give the account. Not to say, oh, because this was my family member or because this person was my friend, he was killing the people and I couldn't say it because of friendship. You're a fool. So bolo tourism. Look at the great minds. Paul Kagami, full animal, tall, showing Africa the power of the full animal mind. Many people think Fulanis only run after goats and sheep and cows. He is telling you that he is an intellectual. The spirit of the great house of Fulani people of Nigeria, my brother, my sister, can never be underestimated. Same way the Akans, the other people all over Africa, every ethnic group has a potential for what? Powerful thinking. Listen to what Kagami is saying. How come 60% of all our tourism in Africa comes from outside Africa? Because of the artificial barriers. I have opened my country to any African who wants to enter for free. But if you are coming from Europe or America, you would require a visa. Free movement of the people. Ghana should come up next. Ghana should have done this earlier. You know why? Because Ghana is the gateway to Africa. And today in Nigeria, something interesting is happening. You know what it is? They also have a gate of no return. They do not call it the gate of no re return. They call it the door of no return, whatever. They have turned it into the door of return. Like Ghana did. What happened to the year of return? We didn't make good use of it. So it fizzled into thin air. It's time, my brother, my sister, to look at our history and use that to be able to make things happen for us. We have too many monuments that are dying out and are going down the drain. That could have fetched us a lot of people coming to this country for tourism. We have a lot of great minds that we could have used, but because of political expediency, which I will call political foolishness. We put square pegs in round holes and nothing happens for us. To Paul Kagame, I want to say thank you. Continue with the story. I want to say thank you so much. You are such a wonderful man. You have taught Africa that yes, things can happen. And the story continues. He says, listen, any African can get on a plane to Rwanda Wherever they wish, they will not pay a thing to enter our country. Said Kagami during the 23rd Global Summit of the World Travel and Tourism Council. My God. Yesterday, we told you about El Salvador. Their capital is San Salvador. The Salvadorians are saying that Africans coming into their country Passing through San Salvador, they will pay $1,000, only Africans. Is it a counteraction of our unity? My brother, if you are ready for peace, please be more than ready for war. This thing that he said is going to bring about a big backlash. Very soon, Europe and some other such continents are going to start 
pushing for Africans to pay. We have to be ready for that. Because we are coming together. Hey! The day Africa comes together, the rest of the world will collapse under the feet of Africa and worship Africa. Write it down. The day Africa unites, the rest of the world will crash under the feet of Africa and worship Africa. Hey! You don't know what power you have. The cradle of civilization. We should not lose sight of our own continental market, he said. Africans are the future of global tourism as our middle class continues to grow at a fast pace in the decades to come. Look at Jamaica. About 35, going all the way to 55% of the GDP comes from tourism. A small, tiny island like Jamaica. It's our own people. Ghanaians who went to build up Jamaica. Now, if Jamaica is only a middle passage journey, and the whole thing started here, all other things remaining equal, Kateris parables, our nation should have so much history that we would be inundated with tourists every second. But no, they are all going to Jamaica. They will go and smoke weed and dance to reggae music, walk on the nice, beautiful beaches, oh, fraternize with Jamaican women and men. A white friend of mine, a lady told me, yo, Black Rasta, I was in Jamaica. And I said, oh, and you didn't ask me to come along? You know what she said? Which woman goes to Jamaica with a man? There are men in Jamaica. Same way. A Ghanaian man will tell you which Ghanaian man or which man goes to Jamaica with a woman. They are there. It's all about tourism. You can't take sex out of tourism. It won't work. We are only having gays and lesbians coming into our country in Ghana here to sodomize the little boys and girls. They are pedophiles. They are not ordinary gays. When it comes to pedophilia, 99% of all our tourism comes from pedophiles in Ghana. I am saying that all the tourists, 99% of them coming into Ghana, they are not coming because of Nkrumah. They are not coming because of Okonfo Anoche. Because our people are not even advertising that and putting respect on those names. They are coming here for pedophilia. Every now and then, a little boy of about five years, the, house, the asshole has opened up like a volcanic hole, all because some guy from somewhere has come in to penetrate his asshole. What the heck? Pedophilia all over the place. To God be the glory. Look at the story. The man says you can fly anywhere around Rwanda that you want as an African. They will charge you a penny. And we know how some shots Rwandan women are. Some of you have seen them on TikTok. Heavy standing like the Twin Towers of America. Solid and graceful. And when you look at their chest, it's like watermelons that are ripe in the winter. And when you look at their back, it looks like two oceans are trying to find solace in a certain paradise. My God, building some two beautiful mountains that are forming the Tigris and the Euphrates turned into mountains. Hallelujah. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm confused. Dash. This is the Blackport, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. When we return, we will be looking at your messages. Send your messages in. Hey! Hey! Wayo!
kot. Koku shora ma. This is the Black Pot, aka Kuku Shodemo, where we speak truth to power. My name is Black Rasta. All right, so send the messages in. Let's see what I go on. All right, one in the boy says, Black Pot is live. Come here! One in the boy says, Black, how far with the National Cathedral? Has it tend to a Galamse site? I think it has. God is showing them power. That stone that they brought from Israel cannot build a cathedral. All the anointing oil they poured there cannot build it. It's the tax money that can build it. And the people are angry. My brother, my sister, I am glad that Nana Kufuadu shall not see the building of that thing in his tenure of office. You think God is a joker like you? Francis Ampim, Jack guide you and your crew black. Blackport is live and is all about Ghana. No one is bigger than the truth. Woyoy, more fire. Joseph Ayombisa says, hello, father. Blessed love. Agbo Benjamin says, my prophet, a vote for Baumia is a vote for Nana Ado, part two. He will turn Ghana into hell for us. NPP does not deserve to rule Ghana again. I agree with you. Baumia is an ill-trained apprentice of Nana Kufuado. A bad master makes a bad student. With that apology, I said this and so many people were sending me messages and saying you are harsh on them. Harsh on what? Do you know how many people died because of these guys who have no common sense of patriotism? And when I speak, people find out to be offensive. Go into the hinterlands. Go into the hospitals. You will come back more angry than me. Oh, Jesus. Alexander says, NPP and NDC can never change Ghana to a better place. Never. Till we get a third force. Ghana needs strong systems and strong institutions. You are right. That is why we keep preaching patriotism. No political party, my brother, my sister, can prosper the people. It's the people who can prosper themselves. The political party is only a conduit pipe. And that conduit pipe, if you keep sleeping in your house, you will never be able to rise and walk through that conduit pipe to El Dorado or to the promised land. It's like a car. You need to turn it on and move it. Sleeping cannot make the car move. America is not prospering because of political parties. It is prospering because of the patriotism of the people. How many people agree with me? It doesn't matter what political party rules America. It won't change America too much. But when the patriotism of the Americans fall and drop, it doesn't matter which angel comes to rule America. It now go work. Write it down. No political party can change Ghana. It is the patriotism of the people that can change the country. A political party is only a conduit pipe through which the citizens walk with patriotism to the promised land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to hear it again? I said, no political party can change Ghana. It is the patriotism of the people that makes all the difference. A political party is only a conduit pipe through which the people have to walk with patriotism to the promised land. Hallelujah. Kai, I wish the people knew this. I wish you had ears to listen. Somebody will not understand until he chews grass tomorrow. Grass. Contomre, 
Allez fou. Bitton. Ras osage fou douabel. Tendan doro. Goma doro. Yenzor Billy says, I'm not a prophet. Black Rasta. But I am foreseeing blood spillage tomorrow. During these three test presidential primaries. May just save us. You are not far from right. We saw blood in the first one. So it will not be surprising to see more blood. After all, there's so much desperation. And the next headline we are going to look at would explain this thing that you just preempted. Justice Mensah says, what makes you think the two parties are the same? No, I don't think that Alexander thinks that they are the same. That's not what he's thinking. They cannot be the same. One is Nkrumah oriented, the other is Dankwabuzia Dombo oriented, so they cannot be the same. The point he's making is, can any political party change Ghana? And I said no, and he himself said no. You remember when they asked me, Black Rasta, if you ever become president, what would you do? I said, I will not build schools. I'm going to make the people hungry. I will not build roads. I will not build hospitals. We have all these already. We just need to maintain them. What I will do is to teach patriotism. All the schools will teach patriotism. Civics. In America, little children in schools, kindergarten, are taught civics. In our country, no. It's important. Without a patriotic nation, no political party can thrive. Oh, but look at even the story of, uh, what's his name? Uh, Moses, through the desert, 40 years, food was coming from the heavens. Manna, you will call it. The people rebelled and said, oh, we are tired of eating this food. Hey, Hey, did you bring us into the desert to kill us? You should have left us in Egypt. Do you read the Bible? That's what the people said. And Moses was broken hearted. He was like, hey! Look at how the Egyptians were killing us. And God did us a favor by taking us out. Look how the Egyptians even chased us. And how the Red Sea was divided into two. All these miracles to save you because of Ezeban Zeze Zeze Essi Nyakupon Yebeifu Oyanyana. Hey! So God said, Don't worry. I'll give them chicken. He blew some wind that pushed some bears, some partridges. They came all the way and landed. On we, what's your pet chicken? On for chicken. You are tired with manna. Now eat chicken. The people were still complaining. You know what God did? He sp split open the ground and he swallowed the people. Those who were ungrateful. No patriotism. That's what needs to happen in Ghana. Wow, the ground should open and swallow you. The ground should open and swallow you. We would have been a better people. No matter how good a leader Moses was, he was never ever able to change the people. The people were supposed to build inside them patriotism and follow Moses and understand that this is our leader. Whatever he says, let us listen to him. Whatever he says, let's listen to him. That's what they should have done. Patriotism. When you believe that your God is able, no matter where your God says go, you will go without questioning. Right? But when you have a doubtful mind and heart, that is when you start asking questions. Patriotism is what we need. Any leader presently trying to be president in Ghana should let the people understand that it's going to be difficult times. Push patriotism everywhere, in every corner. Let's see a message of patriotism. 
let's learn to appreciate our nation. When we see the flag, automatically let us shiver as if we have caught popo bli popo bli That is what will save our nation. But when everybody bad mouths Ghana, Uganda they ain't yet da. Ah, na krobe and cry ni. Ah, a kronfu on kwa. Krobe and cry ni. You demi pevisa bina. A yira cry jai sa kronfu ni. Ah, Ghana. Ghana and ye ye da. That they will even clap their hands on top. And ye ye da. Gotta be ye. Gotta be ye. Ghana be ye. Those who even ran away from Egypt and walked through the deserts, go mu ye ye. Na wa 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 abrosaini we kwa usu ye ye. I'm bet you awka. Justice Master says, "What makes you think?" Well, I think we looked at that already. We have any more messages? All right. So this is from Facebook, and it says, "Akunda Guda, Akunda Guda, Akunda Guda." Says fire. Fuseni Musa says, "Masha Allah." Uh, Alasan Fuseni Sakpela Sakpale says, "Mentor, mentor." I call him Black Rasta. Blessed love. A Beneza Tai Kwesi says. My man, I always salute you. Keep the fire burning. I salute you too. Innocent Duval says the Kuchoko legend Black Rasta respect. Prembu uh, Denny says uh, more respect, my teacher. Soleji Mawena, love and respect, Soleji, all the way from Togo. Says good evening, Black Rasta. Thank God it's Friday, more fire. Hassan Barcelona man says price of Africa. I'm sure he wanted to say pride of Africa. Adongo, the Ital king says, you are really Pan-African. Abagbila, uh, uh, Adatara, Timothy. I love this. Abagbila, Adatara. Please, Black Rasta, why didn't you show up on 3FM for the past five? I'm on leave. Hopefully, I have been called back to cut short my leave so I might go back on Monday. Hopefully all is in the hand of God. Please come back on radio by Monday. Hey. Wow. <laughs> it's an order. Yes, sir. <laughs> I miss you even though Black Kobe was trying his best. Of course, I mean he's a solid brother. He would push it. Good. Dignity Combat says, I love you so much, Black Rasta. Bless your love. So, Legima Wena says, Black Rasta, anytime I'm watching the show, I'm hoping African youth have future, but arrogant leaders can't give them any opportunity. Stephen Elikem Lawson says, More fire, Black Rasta, love you daily. Stephen Elikem Lawson says, You have opened my eyes now. Much love, Black Rasta. Bless the love. Edward Timmy. Hello, Black Rasta the Great. You are doing a great job for mankind. You are speaking truth to power. God will continue to protect and bless you. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Afghan, Afghan says, very proud of your show. Please like it, share, and click on the notification button after you have clicked on the subscription. Right? Hassan Gagin Targin, my Lord. Thank you, Black Rasta. You are my rootical. Pokwa. A Japan says, I love you, black. I love you too. Emmanuel Boatin says, Blessed. Papa Tino says, Amen. I'm sure he's saying Amen to the cancer prayer. Stephen Elikem Lawson says, Speak truth to power, black Rasta. Pokwa in Japan says, You are too much. Blessed love. Keep your comments coming in, and we're going to run from this point. Next story, my youth. We have a second batch of the messages, so keep them coming in. Selfishness killing NPP. And this is not Black Rasta saying that. It's Hackman Ousua Jemai. Come here! You think say so, you day wise. Selfishness killing NPP. This is Hackman Ousua Jemai. I went to the same university with him. Please, I didn't say we sat in the same class. He finished several years before I entered. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And we're in the same hall. Independence Hall. Hakman Owusu Ajimai. I like him. 
Yes, I like him. I like him. Oh, yes, I like him. What is Hackman Owusu Ajimai saying? Run it, my old NPP primaries. We have allowed our selfish interest to override our common goal, and that is Hackman Owusu Ajimai lamenting. Run it, my old. Sure. Hey! He said the chairman of the Council of Elders for the new patriotic party, MPP Hackman Uso Ajimai, has voiced his concerns about the party's current situation ahead of the upcoming presidential primary scheduled for, for uh, Saturday, November 4. Come here! Watch me. He says, speaking at the Council of Elders meeting held at the Alisa Hotel, Mr. Ousu Ajimai openly expressed his worries that personal interests might be overshadowing the party's shared objectives. The MPP is gearing up to choose its flag bearer for the 2024 elections and this race has sparked considerable enthusiasm within the party. Four prominent members are competing this position. Dash. Dash. So you see, what is the common goal of the party? Can we know? When Nana Akufu Addo was breaking down the party with his selfishness and disregard for decency and discipline, as long as money was going into people's pockets monthly in retirement and in positions of responsibility that have been turned into positions of irresponsibility, they were okay. Party common goals are being shared. Oh, nice. Everything is okay. As long as I get my monthly stipends. All of a sudden, when the showdown is on, hey, selfishness. You know, he's killing the party. This party has always been selfish. When Nkrumah was looking for independence for the party, these were the people who didn't want him to be so because he was not Ashanti. Again, they decided to break Ashanti away from the rest of Ghana. Yatiyahu, we all remember that. NLM, National Liberation Movement, founded in the compound of the Otunfo by Osei Yaoba Fuakoto. His son is also running for the presidency. They didn't want to be part of Ghana because they had all the cocoa money and they were wealthy. They didn't want to share their wealth with the rest of Ghana. Nkrumah said, you can't do that. Please, let's all come together and build a better Ghana. We are even trying to pull Togo into this. If we are getting Togo into this and you guys are separating, a bit high. But they wanted to do it. You know why they wanted to do it? Because they were selfish. And you can all remember Osafu Mafu also saying that to be president of this nation, he was caught on tape. To be president of this nation, you must come from an area in Ghana where there is wealth, mineral resources. Is it synonymous with common sense? <laughs> Osafu Mafu said, to be president of this nation, you must come from an area in Ghana where we have mineral resources. I see mineral resources are synonymous with common sense and wits. He's thinking like Kennedy Japan. Uniska we akwasia. Excuse my language. Uniska, e chese se wudie, nyansa die, enya die obenyada. Hey, what a nation. Kennedy Japan said, show me one professor in Ghana that is rich. Then he goes ahead to say, wa unsikania oya kwasia da. Excuse the language. Sebi 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 sebi. So mathematically, those of you who studied mathematics, it means what? Wealth is synonymous with what? Riches, right? Are we running out of battery? I can see a battery beeping up there. Are we running out? All right, so it means that we have to close, right? Okay, so 
<laughs> Today we have elongated the show. And tea. And time no. Why why time? And all day echo. On fine chain kakra. But do you have messages? Shall we just quickly read the messages? All right. And well, I love you. I appreciate you. We're going to take this quickly. We didn't intend to end it like this. Henyo Raphael says, more, 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 more fire, brother. Paul Skimo says, greetings, Black Rasta. I thought you, I thought I was late. Yes, you were late. We started on time. You are the African teacher, Black. And this is Benzino. Well, it looks like our batteries are getting old, so we need to change them. And uh, because... Anyway, I love you. I appreciate you. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushun. We had another topic we needed to, I mean, I mean, show me the headlines. We have two more, right? Okay, show me the other headline we're going to look at. Quickly, quick, 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 quick. Next headline. Next headline. Next headline. Quick, 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 quick. And this one says, ignore nation records on November 4th. And this is Atta Kennedy. He's also a member of the party. Show me his photograph. He is saying that we should ignore those who have run down this nation and made it so terrible. That is Atta Kennedy. This was the man who wrote the book about the elephant and the bush and all that. We all remember, right? He says, the nation records. Those who are in power and they've destroyed it, we should ignore all of them. Last topic. Bring it quick. This one says, How Akumsin calls can a Japan's rough uh, bluff? He said, Do you know who put you there? Your ministry. And she's saying that, Ah, the president created new ministries. Were you the one who told the president to create that? This is how ungrateful people talk. I thought you would have rather gone to find out. And come out to tell us, oh, what you said is not true. Because I found out and they said that, oh, it wasn't you. Rather than saying, were you the one who showed the, you know, you see, how human beings, under normal circumstances, our Kumsi should never even have led anybody. What does she know? These are, you see, they put square pegs in round holes. Like Ajua Safu and the rest. All these people have a mouth to talk. All because they stood on a political platform to make noise for people to come on. These are not people with brains to be able to run the country. How would the country grow? And when we speak like these people think we are insulting. We have tested her wits and we realize that she doesn't even have it. Time to go. My name is Black Rasta. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Show. I'll see you on Monday. Hey! Whoa! Oh, <laughs>